All of the riverboat gamblers are losing their shirts. And all of the brave Union soldier boys sleep in the dirt. But you know and I know there never was reason to The idea danced before us as a flag. The sound of martial music, the thrill of carrying a gun. Advancement in the world on coming home. A glint of glory, wrath for foes. A dream of duty to country or to God. But these were things in ourselves, shining before us. They were not the power behind us, which was the almighty hand of life, like fire at Earth's center, making mountains or pent up waters that cut them through. Do you remember the iron band the blacksmith, Shaq Dye, welded around the oak on Bennett's lawn? from which to swing a hammock that daughter Janet might repose in, reading on summer afternoons, and that the growing tree at last sundered the iron band. But not a cell in all the tree knew aught, save that it thrilled with life, nor cared because the hammock fell in the dust with Milton's poems. <laughs> when Fort Sumter fell and the war came, I cried out in bitterness of soul, Oh, glorious republic, now no more. When they buried my soldier son to the call of trumpets and the sound of drums. My heart broke beneath the weight of 80 years. And I cried, O oh, son who died in a cause unjust, in the strife of freedom slain.
and I crept here under the grass. And now, from the battlements of time, behold, thrice thirty million souls being bound together in love of larger truth, wrapped in the expectation of the birth of a new beauty sprung from brotherhood and wisdom. I, with eyes of spirit, see the transfiguration before you see it. But the infinite brood of golden eagles, nesting ever higher, wheeling ever higher, the sun, light wooing on lofty places of thought. Forgive the blindness of the departed owl. When the death returns to Maryville, everybody's gonna hang their head. They're gonna dress in black down by the track, as all the words are said. They're gonna take the bodies to the grave, put their soul to bed. When the death returns to Maryville, everybody's gonna I was the first fruits of the battle at Missionary Ridge. When the bullet entered my heart, I wished I had stayed at home and gone to jail for stealing the hogs of Curl Trenary, instead of running away and joining the army. Rather a thousand times the county jail than to lie under this marble figure with wings and this granite pedestal bearing the words Pro Patria. What do they mean anyway? Old Hoheimer ran away to the war the day before Curl Trenary swore out a warrant through Justice Arnett for stealing hogs. But that's not the reason he turned a soldier. He caught me running with Lucius Atherton. We quarreled and I told him never again to cross my path. Then he stole the hogs and went to the war. Back of every soldier is a woman. they used to ask me while buying the wine or the beer. In Peoria first, 
and later in Chicago, Denver, Frisco, New York, wherever I lived. How I happened to lead the life and what was the start of it? Well, I told them it was a silk dress and a promise of marriage from a rich man. It was Lucius Atherton. But it was not really that at all. Suppose a boy steals an apple from the tray at the grocery store and they all begin to call him a thief. The editor, minister, judge, and all the people. A thief, a thief, a thief, wherever he goes. And he can't get work, and he can't get bread without stealing it. Why, the boy will steal. It's the way the people regard the theft of the apple that makes the boy what he is. Often enter Clue at the gate, refused me the parting kiss, saying we should be engaged before that. And just with a distant clasp of the hand, she bade me good night as I brought her home from the skating rink with a revival. No sooner did my departing footsteps die away than Lucius Atherton, so I learned when Anna went to Peoria, stole in at her window or took her riding behind his spanking team of bays into the country. The shock of it made me settle down, and I put the money I got from my father's estate into the canning factory to get the job of head accountant, and lost it all. And then I realized I was one of life's fools, whom only death would treat as the equal of other men making me feel like a man. When my mustache curled, my beard was black. And I wore tight trousers with a diamond stud. I was an excellent knave of hearts who took many a trip. But when the hairs began to gray, lo, a new generation of girls laughed at me, not fearing me. And I had no more exciting adventures wherein I was all but shot for her heartless devil. But only drabby affairs, warmed over affairs of other days and other men. And time went on until I lived at Mayer's restaurant, partaking of short orders. Gray and tidy. Toothless. Discarded. Rural Don Juan. There's a mighty shade here who sings of one named Beatrice. I can see now the forces that made him great 
drove me to the dregs of life. I wrote him a letter asking him for old time's sake to discharge my sick boy from the army. But maybe he couldn't read it. Then I went to town and asked James Garber, who wrote beautifully, write him a letter. Maybe that was lost in the mails. So I traveled all the way to Washington. I was more than an hour finding the White House. And when I found it, they turned me away, hiding their smile. Then I thought, oh well, he ain't the same as when I boarded him. And he and my husband worked together and all of us called him Abe there in Menard. As a last attempt, I turned to a guard and said, please say it's old Aunt Hannah Armstrong come to see him about her sick boy in the army. And just like that, he let me in. And when he saw me, he broke in a laugh and dropped his business as president and wrote in his own hand Doug's discharge, talking the while of the early days and telling stories. Out of me, unworthy and unknown, the vibrations of deathless music, with malice toward none, with charity for all. Out of me, the forgiveness of millions toward millions, and the beneficent face of a nation, shining with justice and truth. I am Anne Rutledge, who sleep beneath these weeds, beloved in life by Abraham Lincoln, wedded to him, not through union, but through separation. Bloom forever, O Republic, from the dust of my bosom. Stand and fight. 
bright as one.